In this insightful video, we delve into a poignant story from 2016, featuring 25-year-old Michelle Leng, born Meng Mai Leng, on January 29, 1991, in Chengdu, Sichuan Province, China. Michelle had nurtured a lifelong aspiration to study in Australia. Unfortunately, her journey, despite being an embodiment of her dreams, didn't culminate in a joyful conclusion. Michelle was a compassionate, pragmatic, and respectful individual. Her strong bond with her parents was tested when tragedy struck in 2008. Her father succumbed to an earthquake. Despite this setback, she excelled academically, fueled by her ambition to relocate to Australia. Her mother, Mai Zong Leng, stood as her pillar of strength, convinced that an Australian education would pave the way for Michelle's prosperous future. In 2011, Michelle's dreams started taking shape. She enrolled at the University of Technology in Sydney, marking her arrival in Australia. Her aunt, her mother's sibling who resided in Australia, graciously offered Michelle a room in her apartment. The aunt also had a daughter, two years Michelle's junior. The subsequent year, 2012, witnessed Michelle's 44-year-old aunt tying the knot with Derek Barrett, a man 20 years her junior. Derek, a temporary jobless IT professional, was a mere three years older than Michelle. That marked the beginning of their shared residence in suburban Campsie, New South Wales, encompassing Michelle, her aunt, cousin, and Derek. The initial years progressed smoothly, with Michelle flourishing in her studies, expanding her social circle, and juggling a part-time job. However, from 2016, Michelle's aunt began spending extensive periods in Wollongong due to professional commitments. Consequently, Michelle, her cousin, and Derek continued cohabiting in the Campsie apartment. In April 2016, Michelle's aunt embarked on a business trip with plans to return on the 24th. On April 21st, 25-year-old Michelle spent the day with friends. Around midday, she left the University of Technology Sydney catching a bus to a bustling shopping center downtown. Surveillance footage later showed Michelle, unaccompanied, perusing shops on Pitt Street in Sydney's central business district at approximately 3 p.m. She appeared at ease, undisturbed by her surroundings. Further footage revealed her boarding a train at Street James Railway Station, bound for Campsie Railway Station, where she arrived around 4.30 p.m. This was the last confirmed sighting of Michelle Lang alive, despite her continuing to use her cell phone to keep in touch with friends and family into the late evening. Those who interacted with her reported nothing unusual or alarming in her demeanor. On Sunday, April 24, Derek journeyed to the train station to meet his wife, freshly returned from her business trip. Upon inquiry from his wife about Michelle's whereabouts, he confessed he hadn't seen her in two days. At the time, Derek was unemployed, and his late-night computer usage and late waking hours meant his paths rarely crossed with Michelle's. Furthermore, he mentioned that Michelle had been frequently socializing with her girlfriends and partaking in the nightclub scene of late. Michelle's cousin, given her frequent sleepovers at friends' residences, also hadn't seen Michelle for several days. The unsettling truth was that no one had seen or heard from Michelle since April 22, and her phone was now ominously switched off. This was profoundly unusual for Michelle, who maintained daily contact with friends and family members in China. It was equally baffling that she hadn't accessed her social media accounts, a deviation from her regular habits. In today's digital age, a sudden absence from social media particularly for someone who previously spent a significant amount of time online, often signals a potential problem. This was the case with Michelle. Her aunt, upon discovering her uncharacteristically vacant room with all belongings untouched, was immediately alarmed. The room appeared as though Michelle had evaporated, leaving no trace behind. The following day, Michelle's aunt and her husband Derek initiated an official search 
filing a missing person report at the local police station and alerting the Chinese embassy of Michelle's unexplained absence. Derek shared the details of his last interaction with Michelle at the station. Michelle's aunt revealed that she had just returned from a business trip and had been unsuccessful in locating Michelle independently. Unfortunately, the worst fears of Michelle's loved ones were realized when her body was discovered prior to the filing of the police report. On Sunday, April 24th, at approximately 10.30 am, several individuals reported a body floating in the water near Snapper Point, a location roughly 80 miles from Campsie, to the police. On the same day, numerous Australian media outlets announced the grim discovery of a woman's body. The report stated, a woman's body has been found face down inside a blowhole on the New South Wales Central Coast. The authorities have classified the recent death as potentially suspicious, leading to the establishment of a crime scene yesterday at Snapper Point, situated within the Munmora State Recreation Area. This area is conveniently located near Mooney Beach, nestled between Gosford and Newcastle. The woman, who has not been identified, is described as of Asian appearance, aged between 20 and 35 and about 170 centimeter tall. A post-mortem examination will be conducted to pinpoint the cause of death. A rescue helicopter spokesman said it was not known how long the woman had been there or how she ended up in the water. Detective Chief Inspector Gary Jublin of the New South Wales Homicide Unit said, we are creative in the way that we can recapture the area and what's gone on in the area. So we're reviewing CCTV footage, canvassing that type of thing. I won't reveal what we've uncovered, but we're getting a pretty good understanding of what occurred in that area during that time, he said. Upon receiving a report regarding Michelle's sudden disappearance, law enforcement promptly cross-referenced the details with an unidentified female body discovered at Snapper Point. He said Michelle's relatives were given the sad news that she was the one found dead. Inspector Jubilant said, Police had informed members of Ms. Leng's family, living both in Australia and overseas, of the news. We spoke to Michelle's auntie who she lives with. Then I spoke to Michelle's brother by phone who she lives with in China, he said again. It's terrible news to deliver, and you can understand how upset they were. The authorities solicit the cooperation of anyone privy to details regarding Michelle's activities in the preceding weekend. They ask that such information be immediately reported to aid detectives in swiftly identifying the individual accountable for this appalling crime. Upon recovery, Michelle's body bore multiple injuries, indicative of a severe assault. The autopsy report revealed an excess of 30 stab wounds, marking the intensity of the attack. Evidence of a struggle was apparent from the defensive wounds found on her arms, suggesting Michelle put up a fight against her assailant. In the aftermath of her daughter's untimely demise, Michelle's mother traveled to Australia, unable to reconcile with the reality of her loss, to visit the place her daughter had dreamt of. We even today still cannot accept the fact that she has left us and we are still in great suffering, Ms. Zhang said. The time when Meng Mei and I lived happily with each other will never come back, she said. You can never imagine how painful it is to me. The saddest thing in life is losing someone you deeply love. In the course of his investigation, the detective conducted an interview with Michelle's aunt and her husband, Derek, who were the closest to her as she resided in their apartment. Derek recounted that he last saw Michelle at dinner on the evening of Thursday, April 21st. Following their meal, they enjoyed a movie before Michelle retired to her bedroom for the night. Upon awakening on Friday, April 22nd, Derek found that Michelle was not at home. Given that he had risen late, it was not uncommon for Michelle to have already departed. He assumed that she had not returned home the previous night, likely out enjoying herself with friends. Alarmingly, when he awoke late the following day, Michelle was still absent. Uncertain about her whereabouts and her safety, he sent her a text message inquiring about her location and well-being, which remained unread. Michelle's aunt, unfortunately, could not provide any insight as she was away on a business trip. 
However, reports from some Australian media outlets suggest that Michelle's aunt informed the detective of recent Facebook chats on Michelle's laptop, revealing that Michelle had been in a relationship with an Australian man, and said, I've seen pictures, and he has golden hair, pale skin, and fierce eyes. The police initially speculated that Michelle had been on a date with someone she met online. This theory, however, was quickly discounted. Investigators had already identified a suspect in the tragic demise of Michelle Lang, that being Derek Barrett, the last individual to see her alive. Barrett's inconsistent narrative, which included late risings and consequent lack of interaction with Michelle, raised police suspicion. He was summoned for an official interrogation, during which inquiries were made about his relationship with Michelle and the last time he saw her. When Barrett declined to respond and requested legal representation, he was notified of his arrest on suspicion of involvement in the crime. Investigators had tracked Barrett's cell phone signal, revealing that he had been in the proximity of where Michelle's body was discovered on April 24. This data conflicted with Barrett's declaration that he had not been to the Snapper Point area that day. Additionally, police had secured surveillance footage showing a vehicle similar to Barrett's, near Snapper Point in the wee hours of April 24. Despite the grainy quality of the footage, it was enough to cast doubt on Barrett's denial of his car's presence in the area. The police promptly dismissed that particular allegation. Surveillance footage uncovered by investigators revealed Derek Barrett making purchases of fuel and beverages at a service station en route to Snapper Point. The captured image is of high resolution leaving no room for questioning Barrett's identity. Confronted with the fact that he was dishonest about his activities on the 24th of April, he began citing memory lapses due to his frequent consumption of illicit substances. Barrett's mobile device was confiscated and handed over to eight experts for comprehensive analysis and retrieval of previously deleted data. The data recovered confirmed without a shadow of a doubt that Derek Barrett had not only played a role in Michelle's demise, but also harbored an unhealthy fascination with her. Disturbingly, his own stepdaughter was a target of his inappropriate desires. A video spanning 15 minutes, taken in September 2014, unveiled his stepdaughter, the daughter of his spouse, in the shower. Derek had cunningly positioned a concealed camera in their communal bathroom, cleverly camouflaging it amongst toiletries. In yet another video, Direct was seen entering his stepdaughter's room whilst she was in slumber, standing by her bedside, and indulging in self-gratification. A period of time elapsed, during which Derek Barrett began to focus his attention away from his stepdaughter and towards his niece, Michelle. Forensic analysts managed to retrieve a 30-minute video from his phone, capturing Michelle unaware in the shower. A separate video depicted Derek gratifying himself while standing next to the unsuspecting Michelle as she slept. The phone also housed images captured moments before Michelle's tragic demise. It has been confirmed that Michelle arrived home around 5 p.m. on April 21. Her last communication was a text message sent around midnight, after which she went silent. Derek Barrett initiated his nefarious scheme post-midnight, attacking Michelle, restraining her, and silencing her with tape. His phone held chilling images of Michelle, naked and bound on a bed, fear etched on her face. Seventeen images in total, none of which displayed the injuries that would later cause her death. The final image taken by Derek was around 8 a.m. on April 22, at which point Michelle was still alive. At approximately 4 p.m. that same day, Derek's stepdaughter returned home, oblivious to the fact that her cousin was restrained in the adjacent room. Upon being questioned by investigators, she recounted that she had been home for approximately three hours before departing again. She had not heard any calls for help from Michelle. The exact time of Michelle's death remains undiscovered by the experts, leaving it uncertain whether she was still alive at the time of her cousin's return. It is, however, confirmed that Michelle's body remained in the apartment. During the entirety of her three-hour stay at home, Derek was found to be sequestered in the bathroom with the shower running. Subsequently, on April 23rd, surveillance footage captured Derek exiting his apartment on four separate occasions to dispose of trash bags. 
It is believed that by this time, Michelle was already deceased and Direct was in the process of sanitizing the residence. Upon returning from a business trip, Michelle's aunt, also Derek's wife, noted the unusually clean condition of the home, but did not find it suspicious at the time. In the early hours of April 24th, precisely at 3.19 a.m., Derek journeyed to Snapper Point. En route, he made a pit stop at a gas station, purchasing beverages and refueling his car. Upon reaching Snapper Point, he disposed of Michelle's body and proceeded to take photographs around 9 a.m. Approximately 90 minutes later, the police were alerted by eyewitnesses who spotted a body in the water. During the subsequent events, Derek paid a visit to his parents, displaying no noticeable changes in his demeanor before returning to his residence in Campsey. Derek Barrett was subsequently indicted on 27 separate charges, encompassing unlawful imprisonment, covered videotaping, and the murder of Michelle Lang. Notably, he was not charged with solicitation for lascivious purposes. Echoing the narratives of many criminals, Derek cited a difficult upbringing and school bullying as contributing factors to his actions. There are those who believe that a troubled childhood can serve as a justification for abusive behavior. The court proceedings commenced in October 2017, and upon examination, the psychiatrist assigned to Derek determined him to be fully accountable for his actions. A psychiatrist testified that Barrett told him, I lost everything because of a stupid weekend. Derek composed a formal apology letter addressed to his spouse and Michelle's kin, expressly conveying his sentiments of regret. No words can begin to describe the emotional pain I have caused to you and the family. I can only imagine what you must be going through from your loss. Every moment of my life, I wish I could go back in time and take back that day that has caused so much pain. I let my own problems spill into the family home and they paid dearly as a result. All I can do, in some small way, is to commit my life to trying to make up for what I have done in any way possible. In the eloquently translated victim impact statement, Tam Mei Jing implored the judge to bestow a life sentence upon the individual responsible for such heinous acts of rape, torture, and murder. Tam Mei Jing said, in April 2016, the death of Meng Mei had brought great pain to my whole family and I. A single mom trying to support her daughter, who was an international student in Sydney, she said. My healthy mother was in such grief that she too passed away. Not long after receiving the news of Meng Mei's death, this double tragedy dealt such heavy blows to my family that we are still in irrevocable suffering till date. In the face of numerous charges, Derek Barrett entered a plea of guilty. He received a sentence of 46 years in December 2017, with parole being a possibility after serving 34 years and six months. Throughout his sentencing, Barrett displayed minimal reaction, keeping his head lowered. Initially, his eligibility for parole was set for 2050, but due to unforeseen changes, this was altered. Detective Gary Jubelin commended the extensive sentence in a statement to the media outside the courtroom. The judiciary has acknowledged the gravity of the transgression through the penalty imposed on Mr. Barrett. He said, from an investigative point of view, it is satisfying that we got justice, but there is no joy in a matter like this. It's just an extremely sad case. Michelle's family ardently appealed to the judge for Barrett's life imprisonment expressing disappointment with the lighter sentence meted out. However, this was not the conclusion of their ordeal. An unforeseen event thrust Barrett back into the judicial spotlight, amplifying the distress for Michelle's family. Four years subsequent to the crime, an elderly woman suffering from dementia was found in possession of a USB drive. Interestingly, she resided approximately six miles from Barrett's pre-arrest location, despite having no connection to him. Due to her deteriorating memory, the source of the USB drive remains unknown to this day. Her daughter, curious about the contents of the drive, decided to explore it on her computer. The video footage she uncovered was so appalling that she was compelled to alert the police immediately. Subsequent investigations identified the malefactor in the video as Derek Barrett, 
who was seen repeatedly exploiting Michelle for his perverse satisfaction. The video, atrociously captured over the span of 22 to 23 April 2016, portrayed Michelle not as a human being, but as an object for his vile desires. This footage was a horrific testament to the cruel disregard Barrett had for Ms. Lang's dignity, taking perverse pleasure in her humiliation and degradation. The police statement said, The discovery of the new videos was reported to Michelle's mother. This caused her further distress, and she said, when the police informed her of the contents of the videos, she began to faint. Barrett strategically positioned two video cameras within Michelle's room to capture his actions from multiple perspectives. Supreme Court Justice Helen Wilson, the judge who initially handed Barrett a 46-year sentence, expressed to the court that, had she been fully cognizant of the breadth of his crimes in 2017, she would have imposed a life sentence. Justice Wilson recounted the horrific contents of the nine videos discovered on a USB drive. Moreover, the police provided a compilation of the videos, approximately 60 minutes in duration, commencing with Barrett intruding into Ms. Lang's private space. It was evident that she was profoundly distressed and taken aback by his unwelcome presence in her room. Justice Wilson noted, Barrett's intention to revisit the incident for his pleasure was evident from the deliberate recordings he made, and his disposal of the USB drive indicated a conscious effort to evade capture. Upon uncovering new evidence, Derek Barrett was subsequently charged with the sexual assault of Michelle Lang. Barrett entered a guilty plea and refrained from making any statements. In March 2021, his punishment was extended by an additional 20 years. Regrettably, both his sentences will run concurrently. Nevertheless, his eligibility for parole has been postponed by two years than initially planned. He will not be eligible for release any earlier than October 27, 2052.